Here's the safety equipment we're gonna to need to have on hand when we're doing this. We're gonna have a heat protective glove for our hands, some heat protective sleeves for our arms, and some safety glasses. Because remember, we're gonna be touching a hot nozzle tip, um, we're gonna be working with hot plastic possibly, and even electrical connections. So safety is really important here. It's also good to have all the tools handy when you start this process. So we're, we might need a breaker bar, and a, a 7 8 socket to break the nozzle tip loose, a mirror to inspect the threads, 7 8 six, six point uh, closed end wrench, and then some brass tools to clean the plastic out of the nozzle body, some brass gauze possibly, uh, a nozzle tip replacement, some emery cloth to clean the seat, and don't forget your anti seat. We're going to begin with retracting the barrel um, off of the mold so we can access the nozzle tip. Now we need to empty the barrel to get as much of the plastic out of the barrel as possible to keep the plastic out of the threads when we remove the nozzle tip. Continue to purge manually until no more plastic exits out of the nozzle tip. And again, we need to get as much out so this doesn't drool out into the nozzle threads when we um, remove the nozzle tip because it'll make it that, that much harder to clean out. So there we go, we got all the plastic out. The next step will be to inject it one last time manually to the screw bottom. Let's put the screw manually down on screw bottom. So inject it all the way forward. Now we're gonna manually retract the screw or suck back to the full back position. And this will pull any remaining plastic, uh, most of it out of the threads of the nozzle body and out of the tip. So you can look at the screw indicator there and see that happen. Now is a good time to inspect the wires and see what kind of condition they're in, cleaning the plastic off. And you can do this with the heater turned on. Just make sure that the wires are not going to be in the way of the wrench so that there's no chance of getting electrocuted. If that's the case, you can do this with the heaters turned off and that way you can remove the wires um, in a safe condition. Changing this nozzle tip um, from, from the front side of the machine can be very cramped and yet sometimes you can't do it like on this machine, the controller's in the way. So I went to the back side of the machine and put my closed end wrench onto the nozzle tip, making sure it's fully on the, in the correct position with my heat glove. Now I'm gonna pull down and break it loose. There you go. So it, I was able to get it off without using a cheater bar. Um, once you get it broke loose, it should thread out very easily with just your fingers like I'm doing now. If, if it doesn't come off that easy, then there's probably some damage to the threads of either the nozzle body or the nozzle tip, and you might want to look at those and clean them off or maybe just throw the nozzle tip away. In case someone forgot to put anti-seize on the, the nozzle tip the last time it was installed or they tightened it on way too tight, you can use a breaker bar with a cheater pipe like I'm doing here. And that should only be done to remove the nozzle tip. You shouldn't put it on with this much uh, leverage because you'll over tighten it and it'll be really hard to take back off. If you have the chance, change this nozzle tip during a mold change and run the nozzle through the platen like I'm doing here. It's much easier to get the wrench on, much easier to inspect the threads. It's easier to do it this way. Here I'm going to demonstrate taking the nozzle tip off um, through with the nozzle run through the platen, putting a seven, seven, eight, inch six point wrench on there much easier I see what I'm doing break it break it loose use a cheater bar if you have to and like I said earlier it should thread off easily with your fingers and uh, make sure you're wearing the heat proof glove like I'm doing and there you go now comes the very important part of inspecting the threads of the nozzle body with a mirror and cleaning any remaining plastic out of the threads so that the nozzle tip has a nice seat to seat upon. Use gauze, use a brass pick, use whatever you need to, need to do to get all the plastic out of those threads and you'll have a much better success of putting the nozzle tip on. Now you want to inspect the, the nozzle tip you took off. Um, if you're going to put the old one back on, you really need to clean the threads out really good and make sure there's no metal in it. Um, check the, the, the radius of the tip. So um, you can do this with various ways. If it's really hot, you can use gauze to wipe the plastic off. Um, I'm gonna pick the plastic out of there because maybe there was some metal in there and maybe that's why I took it off. If you're putting the new one on, just make sure you match it up with the gauge to make sure it's the right one and the right orifice gauge to make sure it's the right kind. 
Um, one important thing is to make sure that seat is perfectly flat and there's no dings or low spots on it. So um, after I check the radius to make sure it's correct, um, I have another video on how to use this nozzle radius gauge. You want to get some emery cloth and put it on a very, very flat surface, probably flatter than this table. A good uh, piece of granite or marble would work in your tool room and just uh, re-flatten out that seat there so that it seats off really well against the seat inside the nozzle body. Very important step. This cleans any dirt off. You're going to lose, use a low grit, like 600 grit uh, emery board cloth. Now that you know that your nozzle tip is clean and ready to install, you want to apply a very, very light coat of anesthesia to the threads. This is a very messy process. Um, I would recommend wearing rubber gloves when you do this. I, I forgot here. So wipe as much of the anesthesia off the brush as you can and put a very, very light coat on the threads. You don't want it oozing off. If you pick it up and it's dripping off the threads, you put way too much. Um, and this is to keep the metal from seizing up against the threads inside the nozzle body. And it makes removing the nozzle tip much more enjoyable when you go to change it next time. Again, a very light coat into the threads. And that should do the trick. Now it's time to install the nozzle tip back into the nozzle body. It's got anesthesia on it. It's nice and clean. So again, I'm going to take it. I'm going to thread it in with my fingers, finger tight, and it should thread in this easy. If it doesn't, you should be uh, looking at the thread. You might have some damage. You, you don't want to force it in there. So once I get it started, you see how easy it threads in. I'm going to thread it in until the bottom's out. And then I'm taking my, my seventh, seven eighths wrench and I'm just going to give it a little snug. And the reason I'm doing that is the next step is to let it sit there and heat up for about 10, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and this will make, let the nozzle tip heat up to the same temperature as the nozzle body. After about five to 10 minutes, um, the nozzle tip should be at the same temperature as the nozzle body. Now it's safe to tighten down. I'm going to tighten this guy down with the torque wrench set to 150 foot pounds. That's probably about the right torque setting, but conduct your machine or consult your machine manufacturer to torque it down to the specifications that they recommend. After this, we, we get it tightened up. I'm going to put the mold back in. I'm going to make a few shots and about five, 10 shots, back it up and make sure there's no leaks. Make sure I did the job correctly. 